Hey everyone, time for the next review and the list of the first 20 bands that got me into death metal. Uh, this is number 10 on the list. Now you might be wondering where numbers 6, 7, 8 and 9 got to. Well, number 7, Old as a Madness, I've already uh, done the review of that and put it on YouTube there, but I used a... Um, uh, an a speech simulator instead of uh, doing it myself because I didn't have the means to do it myself then uh, it sounds a bit shit but you can still check it out there if you really want to as for number 689 well number 6 was um, the excellent Air 8 compilation Grind Crusher I started writing a review of that and I just haven't finished it but I thought fuck it this is taking longer than I thought so I might just go through and do the ones I've already written and get back to those other ones later. As for 8 and 9, they were the two, first two obituary albums respectively, Slowly We Rock and Cause of Death. Um, I haven't actually written reviews of them, I intend to one day, but it uh, won't be today. But anyway, um, yeah, Slaughter in the Vatican. Um, first heard X Water on... The At Death's Door uh, compilation, which I've fucked up somewhere, that should be in the list. Where did I put that? Yeah, I've put it after after X Order for some reason. Oh well, should be the other way around. Um, and the X Order track, uh, Desecrator. Well, not a genuine death metal track, I mean even the liner notes of um, that death store said hey, some of these bands should be included and some shouldn't, but um, the it's, to my mind it's, it's still the best track on that album, um, even though it's not death metal, but anyway, because this was on the death metal compilation, it counts as a band that helped me get into death metal even though X Horda were quite vehement in declaring themselves a thrash metal band at the time and yeah then there's been all that bullshit between Exorder and Pantera over the years so it's just time to let it rest <laughs> that was uh, pretty silly at the time and it's pretty silly still and who gives a shit if you're both good bands listen to them whenever you like it doesn't matter who came first or who influenced who I think it's a bit of a mutual appreciation going on there anyway but anyway here's the review Slayer's Rain and Blood is generally regarded the greatest thrash album of all time the perfect blend of aggression speed and metallic rage closely followed by Metallica's Master of Puppets Exodus Bond by, Bonded by Blood and Dark Angels Darkness Descends well that's not everyone's opinion that's just mine but I like slipping that in there however the occasional album manages to shake the foundations of the thrash, thrash genre, if not threaten the leading lights. Exorder's Slaughter in the Vatican caused one of those rare musical earthquakes. Slaughter in the Vatican is everything good thrash should be. Heavy, fast, uncompromising and vicious. Exorder came out of New Orleans, the home of much highly original but often twisted music. And for sheer headbutt in, your fa in the face, kick you in the head nastiness, Exorder is hard to beat. If you think this is just hype, consider the fact that one of the band members was once jailed for attacking another. We're not talking handbags at dawn, but kicking down the door with a shotgun in hand, intending to kill. Thankfully, guitarist Vinnie LaBella's attempt to kill drummer Chris Nail was unsuccessful. If it had been, some of the most inspired thrash, extreme thrash ever recorded would not have ever emerged from the Louisiana Bayou. By now, exhorter virgins are probably wondering what hell what the hell makes it so good to be honest it's hard to tell exactly but a combination of factors adds up to a final product far greater than the sum of its parts the first thing you notice about exhorter is the rhythm guitar sound the word chainsaw comes to mind a chainsaw with guitar pickups attached trying to cut through half inch steel plating that is next to the drums as hard hitting as anything dave lombardo or gene hoglin ever produced Chris Nail's performance stomp all over both of them. Coming from New Orleans with its fine Cajun and jazz traditions, it was inevitable Nail's surroundings would influence the style. 
the offbeat syncopation and deaf drum fills here almost have you hitting the rewind button to hear them again so you can check you really heard what you think you heard unlike other drummers who mix up styles Nail loses none of his brutality nor do any of the time changes distract from the overall effect uh, Kyle Thomas's throat shredding vocals are reminiscent of a more tuneful Roger Murray of agnostic front fame rather than barking tunes about hardcore unity though exhorted deal and hatred of organized religion violence and um literature the album title conveys a bit of the band's disdain for the church but rather than descending into comic book satanism like deicide the lyrics are pure venomous hatred desecrator is the pick of the whole album it is the perfect mix of brutality both musically and lyrically it builds from a threatening moody intro into an out and out hardcore thrash out by the end of the song Anal lust and homicide are pure violence. Bestial lust slit her throat because she's a lousy fuck. Uh, the rest of the album seems to be inspired them lyrically and thematically by Ed Allan Poe and H.P. Lovecraft. While Exilda were overlooked during their career, their importance has since been recognised. If you've not heard the band, you may well think this is all hype. There's no way to explain Exilda without actually hearing the band. If you are familiar with the band, then you'll understand fully. So, there it is. And uh, some people will tell you that The Law was the better of the two albums that Exorder released back in the day, but I still love this one.